from the heat of the fire. Christy says 60 PSI of steam. Ooh, how fun. It tests the turbine on a tool laden table. Let's crack it. Hey everybody, this is Brett Bielan from Solarola, and have we got a lot of good stuff to show you. In this video, we're going to be digging back almost 10 years, and you'll see um, some pictures from way back of development that we've done and where that's taken us today. So this is a homestead series. So we have 10 kilowatts. We actually have 12 kilowatts of solar power up. We get about 10 kilowatts on a given day. And we're putting another couple rows, going to bring us up into the 15 to 16 kilowatt hour range. It's been amazing. And when that sun hits, we are charging our Tesla. We are running an entire farm, all the pumps for all the exchangers, every, lots going on. So we need a lot of power. And for most of the year, we can generate it. However, there are a few months of the year that have proven after being here for three years now, to be a little difficult to get the energy we need. And now remember, we are charging a car. So this would be a cakewalk if we were simply off grid without a vehicle. But that vehicle and running kids around takes a lot of energy. So remember, this is also covering all of our fuel costs. So we need something. We need something to carry us through those weeks of dark winter. Now, initially, we had considered wind power. And while we will absolutely do wind power, there is a need for something that is more on demand. So the wind blows when the wind wants to blow and the sun shines when the sun wants to shine. However, we need something that we can initiate when we need the power. So what we have been looking at seriously, and as I mentioned, you're gonna see how I've been looking at this for a decade now, and that is steam power from wood fire and using what Nikola Tesla himself was his greatest invention, the Tesla turbine. Now, of course, Nikola Tesla, the father of modern AC electricity, wireless communication, so much of our technology is built on what this man has invented. And here he is saying this little steam turbine, this little tiny little uh, turbine uh, run by steam is his greatest invention. Well, throughout this video, I think you'll see why that was his greatest invention. And I've built this turbine. I built it actually in many different forms, and it is absolutely amazing. From Middletown, California, I bring you the Tesla Turbine. You hear that shit humming? Woo! The faster it goes, the more power it makes. And now I want to build the ultimate Tesla turbine and I want to use my outdoor boiler to power it. So here in the winter in Wisconsin, we are burning a lot of wood. So there is six months of the year that it is pretty cold. We dip below zero. We hit 29 below the other night. We are burning wood to keep a pretty good sized shop. Our shop is 40 by 60. There is a bar and a bedroom on the shop where Tony, the person that is building this video, uh, lives. And then we also have to warm our house, our garage, and keep a lot of other systems going. So we need a lot of heat. So we burn a lot of wood. Now there is a ton of energy going up the chimney and going nowhere. And that energy can be used to boil water. And that pressure from boiling the water can be directed to the Tesla turbine to create electricity. So the Tesla turbine is a small turbine that basically takes advantage of the steam power and converts it into spinning rotary motion. And this spinning rotary motion can be coupled to a generator, 
which can output electricity. And as I mentioned earlier, this is what we need because we can make this turbine run whenever we want. We don't have to wait for a, for a, natu a natural event like sun or wind. When we decide, it makes power. So that's pretty cool. And also the fact that we are already burning. So it isn't really like we're doing something new. We're simply taking energy off of what we're already doing and making that system more efficient. So like I mentioned about 10 years ago, I was really into this Tesla turbine and making power off the wood stove and I did just that. So I put together a really nice system where there were pipes in the wood stove. They went through the turbine, out of the turbine, the steam went into a condenser, which turned it back into water. It then went into a small um, kind of a can, which had a float in it. When that float got high enough, a pump was engaged to pump it back into the circuit. So we had a really nice loop circuit to make power. Now, it didn't make a ton of power, but I did make the turbine out of found parts. I used a GM alternator. I even used saw blades that I ground down as the discs for this turbine. So Tony will show you a little bit about how this, this turbine is designed and how it comes apart and how it goes back together and how it makes its power. What's nice about this turbine is it will take low pressure, low volume steam. So we don't have to have these massive uh, containers of steam, which is where the danger in steam comes in. It's, it's from these large containers full of compressed, full of pressurized, I should say, air or steam. And those things, when they crack, they want to take up a really large space really quickly, hence the explosion. But what we are going to be using and what the Tesla turbine allows for is what's called a flash tube boiler. So it is just simply about five feet of tank inside your chimney. So it's a very small space because there's a pipe inside of a pipe, as you can see here. And this allows a lot of surface area to come in contact with the heat of the chimney and also the water inside of this heat exchanger. So it can quickly boil and there's not a lot of volume inside. So should there be a, a rupture of any kind, it's not a huge explosion. Also, the use of pressure release valves makes sure that if pressure was ever to get to a certain point, it simply just comes out the pressure release valve. So pretty safe, pretty simple, and all possible because of the way this little turbine is, des is designed. So also, many of our generators in the, in the United States are actually steam generators. Now, however you're boiling your water and creating that steam, it could be coal, it could be natural gas, it could even be nuclear power. But it's all turned to steam and then utilized through a turbine to electric generator combination. So it's pretty popular. Now, we are going to be doing it on a very small scale. So this is something that anyone can use in their boiler. And here in northern Wisconsin, many, many people use boilers. So once we get this together, it'll be a great combination with solar panels in the summer and the ability, since everyone is already burning anyway, to make up those weeks of dark winter with the Tesla turbine boiler circuit. So we're pretty excited to offer that to first our, uh, our neighbors who are a bunch of cool guys and gals. And then, of course, to anyone that wants to get in on the fun. So it's going to be pretty exciting to watch this new design um, being built. Um, Tony and I both worked at Ford Motor Company and, and did uh, CAD, CAD work and taught engineers there how to use some of the new programs that we knew. So we're pretty good at our CAD. Um, Tony has chosen, and I'm completely on board with him, to use free CAD. So this allows us to um, work with some people who don't want to put a ton of money into buying a CAD program. Therefore, we can share files and um, get a community together building, modifying, and upgrading, and even you know designing better ways to utilize this system. So it creates the ability for community with CAD design. So we're working with uh, FreeCAD now. Tony also uses a little bit of Blender, but it's pretty exciting that um, anybody can just jump on. We can send you files and you can build your own. So let us get it going first, and then we'll pass it on once we get those performance figures up. However, just one side note, <laughs> which is maybe not a small thing, but it is a whole nother way to handle this equation. And that is something called a thermal electric generator. So as you can imagine, a steam turbine and a boiler circuit can be 
relatively complicated, a lot of moving parts. A thermoelectric generator is a solid state apparatus that takes heat on one side, and if you cool the other side, puts out electricity. So it's just a small square, about two inches by two inches and maybe a quarter inch thick, that when you heat one side and the heat needs to come up to at least 400 and cool the other side so that you get a flow of heat through it, it produces electricity. There's literally just two wires coming off of it. Now we could take these thermoelectric generators and we could essentially make our own chimney. So imagine like a square chimney with these, with these little two by two squares populated on the four sides. All the wires coming out, arranged in a way that's suitable to charge whatever voltage, voltages it is that we want to charge. And there you have it. No moving parts. However, of course, there's always another side to these things. And that is that these little, these little devils can be relatively expensive. And much like a solar panel, they take a relatively um, complicated situation to build them. So the nice thing about the Tesla turbine circuit is, and of course, this has to do with how we're going to build it. We are going to do it simple. We are going to try to use as much found materials as we can. So we're talking pipe. We're talking um, discs, which could be literally saw blades. There is so much that can be done from found parts, alternators from vehicles, for example. And that's what makes that side of things so attractive. The thermoelectric generator side is really clean. It is really simple. However, the expense is the factor that can sometimes be a deal breaker. So we're kind of on the fence. And like any good uh, engineers, we're probably going to try both and do a comparison. So what we might do to start with is just a real small chimney just to see what the performance is going to be like, work it hard, get it really hot, you know, cool it down fast, make sure there's not going to be any fatigue issues from that heating and cooling, which can a lot of times be a problem um, with things of this nature. And then compare that to the Tesla turbine and, and how that is created, how it needs to be um, built and what that entails, and then do a comparison towards the end. So feel free to make your comments. It'd be interesting to see the comments on um, on this video pertaining to the two different ideas. Either way, we're looking to make up these, these uh, periods in the winter where we're not getting a lot of power. So pretty exciting that we could just walk out there, make the fire, make the electricity. Now, we are Solarola. What are we doing with fires and Tesla turbines? Well, I'll tell you. Something that I've always wanted Solarola to turn into, and this is going to be a slow process, but some of you have heard of solar thermal. So solar thermal energy is basically harnessing the, the infrared rays coming from the sun and just simply concentrating that sunlight to a central point. Now, this is something I got really deep into. Again, about 10 years ago, we would find some of these old decommissioned satellite dishes and put everything from tinfoil, mylar, anything reflective on them reflect all of the sunlight that hits them. And these things are designed in such a way that they will reflect all of that sunlight to a central point. So much like the radio waves that they were designed to concentrate, they will also concentrate the solar radiation. So we've, uh, Kira and I have, have built uh, cookers with them. And at one point we built a really large one. I could not find any video on that. However, we melted stainless steel with it. So this also, um, extends itself into another possibility, something I've really wanted to do, and that's create a solar um, melting situation. So if we put a crucible and we put aluminum, which only needs about 800 to 1,000 degrees to melt, in the focal point, we can melt. So now we can start making parts. Pretty exciting. So solar thermal has a lot of potential, and, and part of it is all we're talking about here is reflecting sunlight. So there's no complicated process as there is in a solar panel. We simply want to get as much reflected sunlight on a small of a point as possible and then use those high temperatures to either boil or melt or whatever we want with that power. So we can take this Tesla turbine circuit that we were powering in the winter with our wood stove and we can put it in front of our solar concentrating trough. Now we have, the, we have the stainless steel bendable mirrors, we have the ribs that hold them, and we have the spine of that 
quote, rib cage that will arrange them all. And you'll see that um, in, in Tony's drawings, we have built these troughs before. Holy mackerel. That's right, baby. Woo! There she blows. <laughs> There's one video of that steam blasting off right there. And we're going to do it 10 by 10. So quite a bit of sunlight reflected up in the 90% with a lot more energy coming from the sun in the form of, of the infrared radiation than the UV radiation, which makes a solar panel work. So there's a lot more power potential in the solar thermal. Now also expense wise, we're talking about polishing some metal instead of the, it, the intense process of creating a solar panel. So we can concentrate with aluminum, polish the aluminum. You can use mirrors, whatever it is. We want to focus it on the pipe if we want to make steam power through the turbine or focus it on the crucible if we want to melt, say, aluminum beer cans from the neighbor and make parts. So pretty excited to step into that as a supplement to our solar power to keep our homestead rolling. Thank you very much and come again. And again. <laughs>